Okay, good evening. I'd like uh, 710 to open up tonight's meeting of the Clinton Board of Selectmen. Uh, first matter I'd like to open up the meeting with, if we could ask uh, the board to take a moment just to remember some individuals who uh, worked and served the town who recently passed away. It was uh, Larry Town, worked for the Department of Public Works, and Kenny Twinells, who served on the planning board, and Tom Glaughlin, who was an election worker here in town. And uh, may they rest in peace. Thank you. As we get started tonight, uh, we have one formal agenda item. Uh, I think we could start in on that. If uh, we have a representative from Homestead, they'll be here tonight to uh, talk about the streetlight conversion program and update the board on what's happening. Come up and join us and Thank also uh, introduce yourself to some of the new members. Good evening. Hi. Hello. Tell me along. Tom Loya. Tom, Tom, Tom Loya. Hi. Uh, some of you I, I have met uh, when I was here previously, and, and some of you are new. I guess I'll repeat uh, everything. Uh, forgive me if you remember my, my talk. Uh, let me just say that my company is not representing Mass Electric Company. I'm not uh, an employee of the company. I am, however, a municipal energy conservation consultant. And I have been working for numerous towns in Mass Electric Territory for the past, uh, well, up to eight years. And one of the larger areas of potential conservation uh, is in street lighting. Street lighting costs have been going up uh, 7 to 8 percent per year for the past five years. And it looks like they'll continue to rise at at least 5 percent per year. Mass Electric Company has at least three possible street lighting rates. Uh, most of your lights are on rate one right now. And they also are providing you with an offer to convert all of your lights to sodium vapor types under the rate 20. My proposal is that there is a third rate, which is much more advantageous to the community, and that is rate two. Under each of these rates, the, the service is exactly the same. Mass Electric Company does all repairs, all replacements, all relamping, and of course provides electricity under each of these rates. There's no difference whatsoever in the service. What is different in the rates is who provides the capital, who provides the money to purchase the equipment and have it installed. Mr. Montori has provided me with a list of all the streetlights in Clinton a mass electric company printout. And from that printout, I typed in light by light, street by street, exactly where the lights are in Clinton and what size each individual light is and how much it costs to operate that light under current rates. And I've looked at mass electric company's rate two and I said, what is the equivalent size, the nearest equivalent size in the sodium vapor under rate two? And I've compared the prices of your current cost of operating lights versus what they would be under rate two. And I've looked at every cost associated with that conversion. Let me share with you both the, the entire report, if you wish to see it, which is rather boring. It's just columns of numbers. But it is accurate, quite accurate to the, to the, to the penny, currently to the penny. I just printed this out two days ago. So it's accurate to today's rates right now of what costs to operate your lights that are eligible for uh, conversion to rate two. Not every light is eligible. Some of the lights on the main street are aluminum poles wired underground, and those are not eligible under Mass Electric's rules. But the remaining lights are eligible for the most part, almost every light. So let me share with you the summary of this report. And uh, if you would like to see how any of these numbers are derived, I'd be glad to to show you. Thank you. This is actually a better report than what I was able to show maybe six months ago when I was here previously. What the computer has calculated is that of all the lights in Clinton, 997 lights are not only eligible but are cost effective to convert to the rate two. 
That is, you'll get a positive cash flow. That if those lights were converted to the nearest equivalent sodium vapor size, not always the next larger size, sometimes the next smaller size, but the nearest equivalent, you would get overall an increase in lighting on the streets. Here, it's a moderate 6% increase. You could have more lighting or less lighting as you see fit. But for this model, there's a small increase in lighting. That of these lights, of these eligible lights, and of these cost-effective lights, they are currently costing the town $94,353 per year at today's rates. And if they were converted under this program, that cost would drop to $42,000. $532, a savings of well over $51,000 a year. That's 55% reduction in your operating costs for more light. I've also broken down to the dollar here what I believe the cost of this conversion will be. Mass Electric Company expects every new light to be installed with a 25-year contract. And if you choose to have some lights taken out, before the 25 years is fully expired, they do ask you to pay the unamortized value of that light. I call it here the disconnection fee. And currently calculated, there's just over $30,000 in disconnection fees, which would have to be paid under this conversion, this proposed conversion. That they also charge $80 per light to install a new light. They do all the installations. No, no third party contractors would be working. It would only be a mass electric company. So $80 per light times a 997 comes out to the second figure installation fee of just under $80,000. The equipment cost is just under $80,000 also. And there is a proposed management service fee of under $19,000. There would be an expenditure, quite a substantial expenditure, $208,000. $208,650 if this proposal was considered. What I am proposing here is that Clinton, if it were to finance this cost, buy these lights directly, not buy them through my company, because I'm, I'm not a lighting company, not a sales company, I'm just a, a consulting company. But if you were to finance this cost on your own, with the guidance that I can provide you as I am providing other communities, that at this projected interest rate, which is subject to confirmation by your bonding council, you would be paying back your annual loan payment, interest and principal, of just under $27,000 a year. You'd be saving over $51,000 a year. Your net savings, therefore, just the gross savings minus the repayment of your borrowing, your net savings would be over $25,000 a year, or 27% of your current operating cost during the term of the borrowing. And that after that borrowing was complete, which I project as a 10-year borrowing as eligible by uh, state law, you would get the full $51,000 plus whatever inflation does to this. That if you were to consider this Rate two, with this scenario as outlined here, you would have a net savings after paying back all costs associated with this. Out of the savings previously, you'd have a net final savings of over $1 million over the useful life of the equipment, which is rated by Mass Electric Company at 25 years. So that is a, that is a minimum of over $1 million of net savings. And you would get more light, better service, and I believe a safer environment. Now this, this summary was, also there's a graph attached to, which shows you the three options. The black bars, the tallest bars, are what you're currently paying at, I think, a moderate 5% inflation per year. You can see that goes up every year, years across the bottom and current operating costs for the selected lights uh, up the side here. Mass Electric has made a proposal to convert all your lights to sodium vapor. And I believe that they are currently proposing somewhere around a 7% decrease in your operating costs with no money out of pocket. That is your, your option, your other alternative option. 
The rate I'm proposing, the rate two, is these bars with the diagonal lines in them. As you can see, the savings is several fold what mass electrics savings are. And this is the real net savings. After all, borrowing costs are previously paid out of the, out of the gross savings. So you have, actually, you have better than a fourfold savings improvement over mass electrics proposal. No net cost and fourfold real savings per year. After the 10 year borrowing is repaid, you can see that you, your, your operating cost drops by half. And you have approximately a ninefold increase in real savings over Mass Electric's proposal. Um, these numbers are all based on Mass Electric Company's current rates, which I have with me. And this is, uh, Mass Electric will be able to confirm all of these numbers in advance. I'd also say that based on the previous conversations I've had with the town, I have I've done my analysis on exactly one for one conversion, but that I think that there is ample opportunity on certain streets for putting in a bright light to do the service of two dim lights. The dimmest lights are what we call the incandescent lights affectionately known as bug lights, they are 1,000 lumens of brightness. The sodium vapor replacements that we'd be putting in, the smallest size that Mass Electric allows, is 4,000 lumens of brightness, a four-fold increase. I think there are many cases where a four-fold increase in lighting, one of the new sodium vapor lights can do service of two of the incandescent lights, that it will cover a larger area, but the spread of the light is farther. If there are such locations, then your capital cost will go down and your savings will increase. And that net million dollar real cash savings will increase from there. The, the process that my company goes through besides providing all the coordination, all the bid management to obtain all the equipment necessary and all the negotiations with Mass Electric Company, <coughs> is that we also do an on-site survey during daytime and nighttime hours to determine <coughs> what is really the most appropriate size light for each individual location to provide the maximum safety. We look at each light site. We find out what the purpose of that light is, and we give you a detailed report telling you in, in longhand what, what the purpose of that light is. And then when there are possible conservation savings, whereby we don't always go with the next brighter size light, we go with the appropriate size light. We tell you why we've come to that conclusion. I think if you talk to some of the towns we have been working in, you'll find that we are quite uh, good at making that uh, determination. But if those conservation aspects are brought into this program, your savings will go up and your capital costs will go down. And everything will be even better than it's projected here. Um, and that, all, that whole process is done by our company uh, as part of our service. Uh, just, just to summarize, the, um, the process here is an expenditure of funds. I hope it could be clear to the people within Clinton that if they were to vote a bond, which would be required, I believe, by Massachusetts laws, the expenditure would be to reduce their, their financial obligations. Street lighting is a financial obligation. Spending this money will reduce their expenses within the town. It's not to add more expense to the town. It's not to increase taxes. I can't say that it's to decrease taxes because you may choose to use the money for other needy things, very valid things, but it will reduce the expenditures of the town. It's spending money to save money. It really does happen. This is, I think, an excellent example of it. But more than that, they will also get better lighting, I think safer streets, and if you go with this model, they get more lighting. And I think it's a win-win situation. And I, I hope that uh, the other towns where this is going on, that you would choose to contact them and find out that this is a successful program and that uh, my company is able to guide the town through if they chooses to pursue this. Good. Well, we, again, thank you for coming in. You have, you and your representatives have been in uh, different occasions to present this proposal. 
Uh, it was on town meeting, our annual town meeting for consideration, uh, which was narrowly defeated. And then this board made a decision to uh, go with it again on our special uh, town meeting, which is next, next week, to give the townspeople another opportunity of exposure to the program and, and some information to see if this is uh, a program they want for the town. So we appreciate you coming in to update us as well as meet some of the new members. Uh, the portion which has the approval of our finance board uh, is uh, primarily the, the study aspect of it, which uh, we felt was important to at least to begin with. Um, and I'll just open up for comments and questions from the board now, but how long, you did speak to a bit as to what you do in that study, how long would that would that take, would you? Uh, I suspect that it is about a three week uh, process, half of it on site and half of it just typing in and uh, preparing all the, uh, the paperwork. It's a substantial report, you know, probably uh, in excess of uh, 100 pages or more. Good. I don't know if any of the new members have some questions. I, I have one, Mr. Chair. If I could. Tom, in your in your uh, presentation under scope, you list 997 streetlights to be proposed, and you're already to change it, and 176 streets. Is that a percentage of the town's lighting? It is a percentage. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't bring in the total street lighting list of the town. I believe it represents about 98% or 97%. It is better than 95%, I can tell you that. The reason why I didn't propose 100% of the eligible lights is that a few lights, and it's really relatively few, uh, have been installed within the last six or seven years. Mass Electric Company will charge you a fee to disconnect those in excess of $200 per light. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the, the savings are there still for converting even those lights over. But the capital expenditure to disconnect those last few uh, makes it not cost effective. And I want this to be uh, optimally cost effective. You can choose to do 100% of the lights. It's not that much more money. So this is a, almost a one-time expense that the town would actually incur. Yep. It's not an ongoing thing. It would just be something that would a one time. And I would uh, provide, I would do the survey of every light in town. I wouldn't stop at 97%. Yep. And so you'd have a plan for doing all the remaining lights on your own. You'd, I'd show you the uh, specifications for obtaining additional equipment on your own. Uh, you would be able to manage the program on your own afterwards if you choose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah, I, ju I just have a few questions. Why is it that Mass Electric doesn't offer to municipalities um, the S2 rate? And why do they just offer the S1 and the S20? Well, they do actually offer the S2 in the sense that they have gone to the Mass Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities and filed rate two, just the way they filed one and 20. Uh, but they do not promote rate two. Rate two requires the municipality to be uh, uh, self-propelled, if you will. They will not lead the municipalities through this process, as I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, your local representative has never actually had a light converted to the rate two in his territory. I believe there are none. Uh, that all the communities, except for two, have uh, that have been converted to rate two, I have guided those communities through. Uh, the town of Sutton and the town of Oxford are the only other two in the uh, Commonwealth have done it on their own. Uh, Sutton's only done one light. Uh, Oxford over 100. Uh, it is not a simple process. It has to be done according to some very rigid guidelines. And I find I do have to lead the Massachusetts uh, Electric Company representatives through the process because they're not uh, familiar with it. So they, they just, uh, they expect the town to figure it out on their own. Okay, and that's why they have to obviously accept it um, <coughs> if the town so chooses to If go the back. town chooses it. Actually, um, according to state law, they must get the same profit from this rate as from any other rate. They can't have preferential uh, returns on any rate. So that there's no motivation for them to be for or against any particular rate. It is a little bit more work for the representative to handle the paperwork, but we try to make it very convenient for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Well, I know you've been here yeah. before. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I'd like just to uh, go on record as favoring this program. He's certainly, between himself and his other representatives, been out here a number of times. This is probably the third or fourth time I've heard this program offered. And uh, 
I think it's a, a one heck of a plan over a 20 year, 20, 25 year plan. You know, on a year for year basis, we're talking on saving anywhere from 24 to $35,000. I'm certainly in support of it. It's now $50,000 under the new new rates, new rates that you're talking about, right? Exactly. Yes. So, but see, we did cut our budgeting from 100 down to uh, 9 to 75,000. So that's why I'm going off our budgeting of 75,000 a year. We're still talking saving 25 to 30 years. And how do you uh, plan to accomplish that this year? Well, um, that's what I'm saying. We're here. We are budgeting for 75,000 with a 94,000 streetlight cost. We got to do something. Yeah. Well, Mass Electric Company has committed in writing that they would. Uh, do the conversions as agreed with the town within six months. So if the town here were to get started on it quite soon, it is possible to get all this accomplished before the fiscal year gets too old and actually achieve these savings within this fiscal year. But it does require the town to basically <coughs> move forward on it fairly rapidly. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I just ask one more question? Sure. Um, I know we would own the lights, if I'm not mistaken, but who would maintain the lights? The, uh, the rates, which I do have with me here, the language for the maintenance of the lights is exactly the same between the three rates, the 20, the 1, and the 2. And uh, Mass Electric Company does the same service. There's actually very little way of telling in the field which rates, which lights are owned by them and which ones are owned by the town. The only difference is the capital expenditure. And I think the town can borrow money at a far more favorable rate than the utility and the town doesn't have to make a profit, per se, the way the utility has to pay their shareholders a profit. So you can do the same work a lot cheaper than they can, and that's where the savings come in. That's, that's my best understanding. But the savings are 55% of your current operating cost. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I say, we do thank you for coming in, and, and uh, we just felt you know, to have this opportunity to go through it again, as Selector McNamara said, we're, uh, we're up against the wall here. Uh, we, we have a budget which is already underfunded for our projected costs. Uh, we need to take some action, and uh, that's why we felt it was uh, within our best interest that we offer town meeting and townspeople another opportunity to review this plan. So I uh, thank you for coming in tonight. A nearby mm -hmm. community, Millbury, uh, just finished this program and uh, they were able to come in under a budget that was cut and uh, they had a similar timeline, a little bit longer timeline, it would be a little bit more compressed here. But it is possible to do, I think Millbury is an example. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hope that the town will consider it. They would save them a good deal of money. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that uh, concludes our formalized uh, portion of the agenda. Uh, I wanted to go, Richard, if you had some correspondence and uh, miscellaneous matters to, to bring to the board.
signing these. I will read this letter. It's from Superintendent of Public Works, William Gilmore, to uh, address the selectmen. I have reviewed the bids for the purchase and delivery of sodium hypochlorite to the North Dyke pumping station and recommend it be awarded to the low bidder Elite Chemicals for 68 cents per gallon for a one year period. Had a chance to, uh, that was in our packet. Chairman, chance also, to do we uh, award the bid as recommended by the superintendent of public works? I'll second that. Motion made by John McMahon, second by Muriel Stickout, that we award the bid for sodium hypochlorite to Elite Chemicals for 68 cents a gallon. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any signatures on this one? Request from the Abundant Life Fellowship. Dear members of the Selectman Board, my name is Pastor Jay O'Brien and I pastor a congregation in the town of Clinton. I am writing to you in order to request the usage of a piece of town property in order to sponsor a special event. This would be an event freely open to our community. The parcel of land that I speak of is the Edward J. Philbin Memorial Park located on Berlin Road. The event will be called the Back to School Below. We intend to use the park to have special entertainment and guests for the children in the area, as well as a three-on-three -three basketball tournament for ages 14 and up. We are planning to bring in some special music for the youth in the area. The purpose of this event is to offer some healthy alternatives for the youth in our community. I'm sure that you are concerned as I am about the many young people we see hanging out on our town's main streets. I know that part of the reason you have worked with the town police department to sponsor the street dances has been because of this concern for healthy youth alternatives. The date of this event will be Saturday, September 5th, and will go from 2 p.m. in the afternoon until about 8.30. We ask the police department to help keep an eye on this gathering. We'll be sure that there was ample adult supervision. We sincerely appreciate consideration of this request and hope will be able to work with us in our attempt to strengthen the community. Sincerely, Pastor J. O'Brien. Chairman, I also move that we approve the uh, request of Pastor J. O'Brien is subject to the uh, final approval of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Second. Motion made by John McNamara, seconded by Tony O'Loughlin. Now we approve the usage of the Edward J. Philbin Memorial Park on Berlin Road for a uh, uh, event sponsored by Pastor J. O'Brien, subject to approval of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Any questions or comments further on this matter? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This was sent today by fax. It's to set a public hearing for transfer of the ownership of the license. Okay. We have a notice of hearing on application for an all alcoholic beverage license. In accordance with Chapter 138, Section 15A of the Massachusetts General Laws, a public hearing on the application of Laurie's Restaurant by Nathan Schwartz for the granting of a seven day all alcoholic beverage license at 1075 Main Street, Clinton, Mass., formerly Michelle's Restaurant, will be held on Wednesday, September 9, 1992, at 7.30 p.m before the Board of Selectmen, Town Hall, Clinton, Mass. And this request for a hearing is submitted by James T. McLaughlin, Esquire, on behalf of Nathan Schwartz, doing business as Laurie's Restaurant. <coughs> Has that been just received? Has it been posted or set up? Or? The attorney will post it in the newspaper. The application was sent in today. He's asking for the hearing to be set up to discuss it further with the board. I'll have applications from the board prior to the hearing. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, Mr. McNamara. Richie, are you, is that for a new license altogether, or is it like the one that was at Catalucci's down there? It's the same license Chase down there. I think Mr. Schwartz purchased it at an auction. Okay. And they're looking for the transfer after the auction. Do we need approval for that hearing? 
I'll make a motion we do approve the uh, request as submitted by Attorney James McLaughlin in regard to the uh, all, all alcoholic beverage license for uh, Wednesday, September 9th, 1992 at 7 p.m. Second. Motion made by John McNamara, second by Tony Laughlin that we approve a request for all alcoholic uh, license hearing on September 9th, 1992. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The police chief sent his report in for the month. I don't know if the board had a chance to review it. I was about to wait for the full board. Uh, yeah, we, we could wait wait off on that. That's no problem there. Uh, we just received these minutes, so we'll wait on those. Uh, and also, I sent the gift to the board tonight that you're going to need to take some time to review a couple of things. One, I attached a memo outlining concerns and some recommendations concerning the town of Clinton Flower Fund. Some of the boards talked about in the past the fact that in order to maintain the flowers up at the cemetery for Memorial Day, the town has run a deficit each year and had to pay for the, uh, make up the deficit from other funds. This proposal I'd like the board to review and discuss as part of the next meeting. That would be helpful to the superintendent of public works to the town treasurer who will receive the funds. Also in the board's packet tonight is a memo that I'd like to send out to the town employees concerning the early, early retirement incentive. And the reason why it hasn't been sent out yet is because <coughs> within the memo, incorporate the state eligibility requirements for people who are interested in retiring from this incentive program. The requirements are straight from the para guidelines that were sent to the town. There's nothing different from what the state had adopted in the budget. The board didn't have a problem with that. Uh, I could send it out. Again, you could take a couple of days and look at it and discuss it on the CG Monday night. Or the next week. <coughs> this was the uh, early retirement incentive, which is uh, before consideration on uh, town warrant for special right. town meeting on Monday night. Now, the, the timeline is 45 days once it's accepted. Now, <coughs> there is, and we talked to Perra about this, the town meeting has to accept it, the executive board, executive authority, the board of selectmen has to accept it. Once both of them do that, then the clock starts running for 45 days. So, my interpretation, and, and Perra doesn't seem to argue, is that town meeting votes on it Monday and then the selectmen make a formal vote on it and then follow the meeting then the two weeks can, can, 45 days can stop then so you do have some time so the clock won't necessarily start ticking Monday night you come back to your meeting formally accept it then the 45 days can stop and at that time there's a little bit more breathing room than what we're under right now right and we would have plenty of time to get notice out to all employees right. so by the time it, the day starts the 45 days do start everyone I uh, should all already be aware of it by then. One of the things in the guidelines is the board can set the number of people they would like to uh, allow to retire. I didn't put that in the requirements because it doesn't seem as though we're going to have that, that many that are out there right that are eligible. Now, eligible for it. But the board can set that number. And I attached the para guidelines for the board to compare to what uh, is in the memo. Okay. Good. Thank you. The other, um, uh, that's Richard, sure. on that same subject, and you did check with Perra as far as it's all right to have legislative approval before executive? Yeah, they didn't seem to have concern either way. Okay. And one of the questions I did ask, since the board did put it on the warrants, would that deem accept, accepting the statute? And she said, no, you could, you could argue that is, that's just putting it on the warrant to be voted on, and then you can go back and take a formal vote on it which is what I'd like to see done, so that gives you more time to look at the requirements and get town meeting to vote on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. And the final item, um, so the received fact yesterday from the Department of Revenue concerning an opinion on one of our warrant articles for reimbursing withholding tax from a pension. The board has a copy of the amendment, the uh, opinion as well as some talk documentation of letters I sent down to the Department of Revenue and some information supporting the letters for the board's review. Okay. Is 
this again would be for a town meeting. And that would be given the opinions available to anybody who would like a copy of the opinion. I want to make sure the board has a copy of the Good. Thank you. Time is all I have. If the board has any questions. Any questions? Comments? Is that it? There it is. Okay. Well, just uh, one, if there's no other business that any member would like to bring up, we can go to public comment section. Uh, beforehand, we'd just like to make a, another plea for Monday evening, special town meeting uh, at 7.30 p.m. at the town hall auditorium and hope that uh, people will give us a couple hours to come out, get a quorum, to sustain a quorum, so that we can finish our business, which was uh, cut short at our annual town meeting, as well as some new business which has come up. So we appreciate people's help and support on Monday night. Thank you. And finally, for tonight's meeting, I'd like to open up for our public comment section, if there's any questions or comments from any member here in, in the general public. I right, a copy of that uh, report from uh, the Department of Revenue on Rita McNally, okay. if I might. Sure. And uh, if I could read it, then maybe I'd have a question for you. First, I haven't read it, and so I might need to, to ask We haven't read it either. Yeah, we what? just... We haven't read it either. We yeah. just received it. Oh, received okay. It. Well, I'm wondering whether it, if it were approved or disapproved, uh, if it could go to the state legislature anyway. I mean, uh, there has been a definite mistake with this woman. Well, and I, I'm wondering if it does go to the people, will it go to the state legislature? Well, this warrant article that is on, as I say, our, our warrant is finalized and will be acted on Monday. And uh, all the warrant article asks is for a, a uh, uh, reimbursement of that of that amount from the town so that's how the article is is, is worded and, and that's what will be the, the decision have you seen any of the papers that Mrs. McNally had? she has been here before the board and this this issue has been discussed right so okay. even the new members no, it's including tonight's back no. oh, all right so. This will be discussed Monday night. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, sure, Mr. Connor. Thank you. 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 Any final business for any member on the board? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Chairman, I'll move that we adjourn at 7.48 p.m. <coughs> Before we take a vote, though, don't we have the warrant? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay, okay sure. Yeah, we got to do the uh, weekly warrant. Okay, so sure. We'll, after that, we will be adjourned. Right, sorry. Yeah, thank you. We will. <coughs> thank you, Mary. Okay, so that will end our formal portion of our meeting. We will take time to review and sign the warrant, and uh, we will uh, adjourn formally thereafter. And we'll see everyone Monday night at the town meeting. Good night.